Hello, everyone. I want to tell you how much I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you um, somewhat directly uh, through this video clip. We have some of our students here uh, through our digital media program, uh, Mr. Trask at Fayette County High School. We certainly appreciate he and his students being able to record this session. Actually, the session, uh, the idea for it, really started back this past summer uh, when we uh, had our administrative institute and we talked about a lot of things that uh, we hope to be able to begin to look at uh, in our quest to become what we've been calling world class. I know that we've just received our milestone data uh, and I want to tell you as a classroom teacher and other support staff, exactly what I've told our building principals. Uh, we want to take this data and use this data uh, constructively, but we're not going to use it uh, in a way to uh, beat people up with it. Um, we're going to use the data in a very professional manner. It somewhat reminds me of a, a story I had heard recently about a couple uh, who uh, the, the, the husband was about to have a birthday and he had been talking about the kinds of things that he would like to have for his birthday and uh, had mentioned you know maybe a brand new sports car or something along those lines I don't know if he was going through a midlife crisis or not but it was a situation where uh, he had clearly uh, or at least he thought he had clearly articulated that to his spouse well his birthday came and um, uh, the wife in her busyness uh, somewhat had forgotten uh, that it was his birthday in the earlier conversation and he was he was a little hurt by that and uh, he shared those feelings with his spouse and said you know really I'm disappointed that I didn't get what I wanted for my birthday present uh, but um, if I have uh, something that goes from zero to sixty in a matter of a few seconds out in the driveway in the morning all things will be fine uh, so the wife said, you know, I'll certainly try to accommodate that. And uh, sure enough, the very next morning, uh, the husband uh, went outside and uh, he saw a, a, a very beautifully wrapped small box in the driveway. And although that was not quite what he expected, he was still excited nevertheless. So he went over to the, um, to the box and there was a card there and in the card the, the wife had written I hope this meets your expectations so he's excited maybe he's thinking there's a set of keys in the box but he tears open into the box and reaches in and he pulls out a brand new bathroom scale sure enough it goes from zero to sixty in a very few seconds uh, I tell that story uh, to talk about why um, you know our perceptions uh, sometimes are a little bit different than what we actually receive. Uh, so when we look at the milestone data, I do want us to look very closely, very carefully, very intentionally uh, with this data as we look how we can move our needle forward and become that world-class district that we want to talk about. We have a very, very good school district. Uh, it's been that way long before Dr. Barrow came to town. Uh, but in order for us to really move towards world class, we're going to have to look at some things a little differently. And uh, one of the ways that we wanted to be able to paint that picture and explain why uh, is a video that we have produced and created uh, through eBreezy Media. I certainly uh, appreciate the work uh, that this company has done. Actually, one of their principals is a graduate from uh, Fayette County High School, Stars Mill. So we felt like uh, they could do an excellent job and I think they've captured the message that we're trying to talk about. And uh, the first thing I'd like to do is to share that video with you now. We have a lot to be proud of in this county and as a community we recognize that our schools are our greatest asset because here we proudly celebrate a great tradition of educational excellence. Fayette County Schools are ranked among the top schools in Georgia. Wow, 
throughout U.S. history, effective schools have aligned their purpose and practice with society's social and economic drivers. Like the U.S., Fayette County was an agricultural-driven economy when we celebrated our first class of 24 graduates in 1920. Beginning in the 1970s, we saw the addition of industry and international companies, which brought jobs and growth to our community. In fact, between 1983 and 2014, our population tripled to over 100,000 people. In the 21st century, our economy changed again and is now being driven by information and technology. Business leaders from around the world have identified four skills that are critical for success. They have also moved from a need for workers to have deep knowledge in one discipline to having the ability to apply knowledge across disciplines to real-world, unpredictable situations. The speed of progress has also changed dramatically, with exponential change now the norm. The top 10 fastest growing jobs today didn't exist a decade ago. New communications tools and interconnected technology has made us a global economy, creating jobs and opportunities we could never have imagined a short time ago. Very recently, incredible technological advances have occurred. Harvard researchers used a 3D printer to construct a blood vessel. Ultimately, that could lead to printing fully functioning kidneys. Novartis and Google announced that they were partnering to create a new smart contact lens which could automatically adjust its focus and monitor a diabetic's glucose levels. And IBM scientists shared that they had created a new computer chip which is capable of sensing, hearing, tasting, and feeling its environment. These extraordinary advances and the exponential speed of change brings us to a sobering realization. As we have done throughout our history, and as some of our teachers are doing today, we must be aware of the changes in our economy, and educators must be prepared to change our practices. Today, we need to meet the challenges of an increasingly interconnected global society with technology that is transforming every aspect of our lives. And business leaders in the community must also join the effort by offering real-world exposure to the skills our students are trying to develop. As a community, we know that our schools can continue to be our greatest asset, but we will have to develop the capacity and the will to inspire and prepare our students to become creative thinkers, problem solvers, and innovators so that they can be more globally competent and competitive. Together, we can create a world-class education system here in Fayette County, one that continues to honor our enviable record of past successes while embracing new practices and opportunities for rigorous and relevant learning for all of our students. So again, I, uh, I think the video captures much of what uh, we hope to be able to share with our community at large. Uh, we are a good school district, uh, but we want to become world class. In order to do that, uh, we're going to need to begin to change our practice just a bit. The problem that we have, though, is that because of technology, social media, uh, we're growing exponentially and changing four to five times faster uh, then we're changing within our educational settings. In order for us to stay ahead and enjoy our position of affluence with regard to educational communities in Georgia and really beyond, this is the new path we've got to take. We've got to aim a little bit higher. And uh, when I say that, folks, I will tell you, I know every one of you in here and I know our classroom teachers, you're working as hard as you can. We're not asking you to work harder. We're talking about working smarter and becoming more focused um, and looking at best practice. And when we talk about that, um, we've done a, a good bit of research about what some of the best world-class districts are doing, and we want to talk about that. So what are, the, what are some of the key factors that we need to look at? And um, in looking at those considerations, the first thing, is that we want to make sure that we have high expectations for all students. 
When we look at our data and you break it out in subgroups in the categories, um, you can, you'll be able to see there are some areas where we're not performing as well as we would like to. Uh, that's not to say it's bad. It's not. But there's some things that we can do better. You know, traditionally our Caucasian students, our white students, are, are at, the, at the top with regard to performance. But I will tell you, in some schools, we actually have minority students that are performing better than Caucasian. We want our expectations to be that way for everybody, regardless of the subgroup, whether it's ELL or uh, students with disabilities or um, no matter what the ethnicity or, or uh, gender is. We want all of our students to have that. The second thing that we want to take a look at, you know, there's accountability every day when we walk in our buildings. Um, but we, we're going to continue to be measured by assessments. Uh, we use those as tools, uh, and that's okay. We, we need to use that, but it's not all about a single test. Uh, and we're going to have to begin to think about uh, how we measure and monitor our student success. Okay. I can't tell you how important uh, our classroom teachers are. You've heard me say this before in this group. Um, you know, we have two groups of employees in our district. We have our classroom teachers over here and everybody else over here. And our folks over here, our support group, is here to support our classroom teachers. And uh, I know uh, that's a tall order because not every person needs the same type of support. And we have to be able to look at that and recognize that. But relationships are, are critical and certainly our classroom teachers are at the forefront of that in establishing positive relationships with our students. Last but not least, we've talked about personalized learning for uh, our students for a very long time. But we realize that personalizing learning for a class of 25 or 30 kids is pretty tough. Um, we've got great teachers that do a phenomenal job at that. But with some of the tools that we have with technology, Again, working smarter rather than harder, we feel like we can really hit the mark with regard to personalization with our students' education. So if we can go, okay. Um, some of this work can be found, I've, I've referenced this book before uh, through Yang Zhao. He's a professor emeritus at the University of Oregon. Uh, obviously, you can tell he's not from South Georgia. Uh, bright guy. And I think he really has hit on a, on a number of things. And what I've done is I've taken a few pieces out of his book that I think are critically important, and I want to share those with you. As far as what world-class learners look like, we're talking about a broad, flexible curriculum. And um, I really feel like with the Georgia Standards of Excellence, with the work that's going on now, and I know uh, Dr. Rickley, Dr. Morgan are both working with science and social studies revisions at the state level, so we've got a seat at the table. I feel good about that. But traditionally, we have focused on math and English, English language arts, ELLA, and, and maybe reading to a certain extent. Certainly, those are critically important, but we've got to integrate some of our practice across all disciplines um, particularly with our literacy standards. And we're going to be talking about that. In fact, we've got some pilots going on currently at the middle school with a product we call Think Circa. And we'll be sharing more as, as we are able to. I know that some of our high schools are actually using that product as well. So that's the point that I want to make. We've got to think smarter um, and tailor our curriculum in a broad way. Um, capitalizing on student engagement. Do you think these students are here because it's a chore? They like this kind of work. They're engaged in it. And that's what we want to do is find the passion of every student so that they can become engaged, um, much like we've talked about career pathways, but that's, that's not exclusive. When we talk about fine arts, we have a phenomenal fine arts program here. Students are very much engaged in that. We have some students that are very much engaged in academic pursuits. So whatever their passion is, that's where we want them to engage at. Support is critical. Our goal, certainly my goal as superintendent, is that I want to try to remove barriers uh, that prohibit students and staff from reaching their full potential, their full success. 
Uh, Dr. Edelman, I've had a chance to work with him on a number of projects. He calls it an integrated wraparound system of care. Um, and that's really where we want to go. Um, so making that point where we're connecting with our students, building those positive relationships, those are critical. I can't tell you how important they are. Um, again, personalizing the educational experience. That's really what we want to do. We'll move a little quicker. Um, certainly authentic learning is something that I think is relevant and meaningful. I know we're looking at a number of opportunities where we're having project-based learning activities. Um, you know, I, I will use the example of the video that we, we shared with you. Folks, we probably had, I don't know, uh, six, eight revisions of that. It wasn't that we did it and okay, we're done. But we would go back and we'd tweak, and then we'd go back and we'd, we'd, we'd modify this or we'd twist that. And ultimately, I think we've got a world-class product that we can share anywhere with anybody and feel good about it. That's the kind of thing that we want to do with our student work. It's not where we, okay, if you will, it's not where we just give an assignment and the assignment's done and it's turned back, teacher grades it, here's the grade, and then we move on. That's what our past practice has been. We need to move forward with that so that we're um, uh, in a more authentic position. Certainly looking at a sustained and disciplined process. And that's what we're talking about as far as how we do our work. It's okay to have revisions and really drill down deep into the work, particularly where the student's passion is located. Um, and I think that's where we are. Go ahead. Um, Local strengths. The, the unique thing about Fayette County is, folks, we have international corporate headquarters here. I don't know if you've been reading the news about NCR and their huge infusion of cash and they're building a new corporate headquarters uh, just a, a little way up the road in Atlanta and they have a major presence here. That's an international company. Things, uh, companies like Panasonic, Gerishheimer, um, healthcare services like Piedmont Fayette, which is a part of a much broader network that really is world-class healthcare. Uh, those are the kinds of things that we need to partner with and look, as the video said, look at what industry is doing, where it's going, so that we can be able to make sure our students have some idea about what the options and opportunities are moving forward. Uh, we need to make those connections. And I will tell you, one of the things that I hope to do this summer is that we hope to take some of our CTE teachers, our content teachers, and be able to have them go to um, a, a week-long internship, if you, will, if you will, in the business sector, so that they can see what the business and industry is, is doing and what level of skill and what level of academic work and, and hands-on work that we need to be able to accomplish so that they can then come back and be able to share that with classroom teachers and our students in a real world setting, in the classroom setting. So uh, those are some of the things that we've got coming that we'll be working with and, and planning on. I know we've talked with uh, Ms. Gibbs and Ms. Collins and Ms. Bonner and we're already beginning to solicit those partnerships to see who would like to do that. Principals, we're going to be talking with you about that in the very near future. Um, okay, if you will. A world orientation, certainly a global perspective is critically important. Uh, we don't just operate in Fayette County uh, anymore, or just in Georgia anymore, or just in the Southeast anymore. We're really looking at global competitiveness uh, for our students and global competence as well. We want to be able to pursue learning beyond our walls, and that I know we talked about this, and this happened just a couple of weeks ago with the Connect Ed adventure. And we brought different industry and, and different uh, courses and connections from all around the world, from Australia, from Alaska, from Guatemala, uh, uh, from the Baseball Hall of Fame here in the, in the United States, the, the Holocaust Museum numbers of connections all around the world that we were able to figuratively tear down the brick and mortar walls and bring to our students. And our students are able to go out to the world. That's the type of global uh, awareness and competence that we want to develop. 
We talk about language, and I know currently we have German, Spanish, French, and Latin. That's what we currently offer in system. Um, I've heard um, a futurist tell the story that if you're bilingual, particularly if you're trilingual, if you can speak three languages, you can be fluent in 90% of the world's economy. You know, if we're going to be globally competitive and globally competent, world language is a big piece. And our students need to have the opportunity for exposure. There's no reason why we can't offer other languages as well, whether it be Chinese or um, uh, Arabic or whatever. Uh, it's a situation where if the desire is there through technology, I think we can, we can hit the mark. So we want to provide those opportunities for our students uh, so that they can be culturally aware. So the things that we want to go back over with and our staff, uh, in order for us to be that world-class district, certainly we want to engage our students. Uh, we want to give them some choice. We've got to help them find their passion. We want to personalize uh, the experience for them. And we can do that uh, in a lot of different ways. Um, authentic learning, the hands-on, the relevant piece is critically important for our students. Uh, the global perspective and the global competence. Those are the kinds of big overarching things that we hope to be able to put into play for our students moving forward. Using our data and saying, okay, how does this fit? How is this going to look for us at an elementary school, a middle school, and a high school? How is this going to look for us district-wide? Uh, we have some things that are going on that make us very, very good. And uh, the question that I want to ask uh, again, the people in the room and maybe even our greater audience out in the, in the classrooms, in the, in the buildings. The question is, do we really want a world-class system? And you know, I've asked that question in a number of different settings, and I haven't heard a person yet to say no. Now, some people don't like to have their cheese moved, don't get me wrong, but I've never heard a person in this community say no. Fayette County wants to be first class. They want to be world class. They want to be top drawer, whatever uh, descriptor you want to use. And folks, we can do that. We've been very, very good for a long time, but we have the capacity to be world class if we choose to be. So we've got some good things, and this is where we are, and I want to celebrate some things that, are, that have actually taken place that I shared with the community. There are a lot more, please don't get me wrong, but these are just a few that we wanted to share. So Kay, if you will, when we look at uh, the partnership that we have with Woodruff Arts, folks, not many school systems anywhere in the country have that kind of partnership. And if you look here, uh, these are our students. They're not somebody, this is not a, a fake photo. These are our kids that are participating with the symphony, the Atlanta Symphony, in some master classes. You know, that's world-class fine arts, in my opinion. We look at the High Museum of Art. Uh, we've had numbers of teachers go and have professional development there. We've brought some of their experts to us, and they're training our teachers in how to integrate the arts into our content areas. I think that's tremendous. Uh, Ray and uh, Ogechi have done a great job in bringing those opportunities and working. Uh, other, uh, the Rube Goldberg experiment, we've got our classroom teachers, the professional learning. So we've got a lot of things that we're working with to be that world class. And when you look at performing arts centers across the country, you've got the Lincoln Center, you've got the Kennedy Center, and you have the Wood Woodruff. So it's the, it's the number three performing arts institution, performing arts center in the country, and we have a tremendous partnership with them. And we're only scratching the surface, I believe, with the type of work that we're doing with them. Um, one, uh, one thing that I'm particularly excited about as we look at STEM, uh, and there are a lot of different STEM opportunities out there. This is just one that um, our high schools started, our middle schools uh, have, have started working on that, really this first year of implementation. And we also have five of our elementary schools that are working with Project Lead the Way. And Project Lead the Way um, is a program that, um, uh, to my knowledge, today, Fayette County is the only K-12 
uh, systemic engineering project lead the way program in Georgia. Now I don't know, there may be others someplace else, but here we're, we're breaking new ground with this. And it's not just, you know, the robotics, although that's a big piece, it's biomedical engineering and those kinds of things that our elementary students, our middle school students and our high school students are gonna be able to take advantage of. And, and I know Patricia's real excited about this work. I know uh, that Ms. Collins has helped to facilitate this. So this is not something that Jody has done. This is something that our, our team is working on. So we're real excited about this. And I, I, I will say that um, College Board, if they endorse a curriculum, um, you know, those are the people who do AP and, you know, all the other big national tests that we get to work with. When they endorse a program that's got to be pretty good, they've endorsed Project Lead the Way. So just to give you a little sense of that, you'll go ahead. We've talked about the Center of Innovation, and, and folks, this is evolving as we speak. Uh, it's, not, uh, it's not perfect. Um, whenever you look at higher ed, you know, that's an educational institution, right? And then you look at K-12, that's an educational institution, right? I mean, we should be perfect partners, right? Well, I think we're moving in that direction. You know, it's kind of like putting a hand in a glove. The hand's in the glove, but all the fingers haven't matched up just right just yet. That's work that's happening, but it's not just happening here in Fayette. It's going on all throughout the state with regard to move on when ready. And um, our system is beginning to do that. We had dual enrollment courses here prior to this, but this is a much more expanded, much more robust uh, initiative. And we think about it typically at the high school, but folks move on when ready goes down into middle and elementary school. We just really haven't had a lot of conversation about that yet. But that's certainly one of the things that we're hoping to be able to do and expand that and how that's going to look is it's going to change. Right now we've got it housed over in FIS. I don't see that as being our permanent home. I really don't. What I really hope we're able to do is to take our centers and put those in the business and industry campuses. So we'll have a health care at Piedmont Fed or engineering at NCR or Panasonic. Uh, fine arts, maybe at Pinewood Studios. Wouldn't that be cool? So those are the kinds of things, long range, that I'd love to see us evolve into. Um, business partnerships, real pleased with this. We, uh, we've had this in the district for a while, but we're trying to refine it and make it a little stronger. We currently have about 50, 60 uh, school uh, businesses that are partnered with us. Folks, I really think that ought to be closer to 100. Uh, we have roughly just under 80 students that are currently involved. I mean, we should be somewhere in the neighborhood of three to 400 students that are participating in these uh, internships and apprenticeship opportunities. So we've got room to grow, but we're very proud of the work that we have going, and I hope that's going to be something that, again, personalizes and expands our depth of curriculum. Um, okay. This is the last thing I wanted to share, and I don't know if, we've, if you've seen this. Have we shown this? I know we, sh we shared it with our board. I want to share this with you to kind of highlight some of the Connect Ed adventure. I'd mentioned that a little bit earlier. Now this video, although it doesn't have all the slick graphics in it yet, but this video was created by our students. And I think it's pretty daggone good. And I want to share that real quick. You're going to see examples here where our students can interact and connect and collaborate and work on projects or, or, or science activities or uh, research. They can literally do that with people all around the world 24 seven. Uh, just some of the programs or some of the connections that I'm very familiar with. We're gonna have a telehealth connection where we can actually do physical exams and monitor an individual's health that's not just here in Fayette. The connection is actually in Guatemala with the clinic there. And, uh, you know, those are the kinds of opportunities that our young, young people are going to have.
pretty cool stuff, I think. And again, our students created that. Uh, and they did it in a very short time frame. Uh, kudos, uh, Dr. Lane, to our folks. Jamie, thank you for that work. But that's the kind of opportunities that I think that we want to be able to make available. We hope to have another Adventure Connect Ed maybe in the spring. So if you have interest in hosting that, we, we actually brought um, uh, Fed Elementary students over to Fayette County High because that worked well. Um, we want to be able to expand the capacity. I know that we've had really cool things that we've done uh, with Skype and those kinds of things, but these are, these are a little bit more uh, robust, if you will, and hopefully we'll be able to continue to evolve in that regard. So uh, I'm going to bring this piece of our meeting to closure, but hopefully our classroom teachers will have some sense of what we hope to try to accomplish uh, moving forward. Uh, I very, very much honor the traditions of Fayette County Schools. We had a great school system long before Dr. Barra came to town. Um, but we can have a world-class system. And that's where I want us to shoot and to aim for and what we're going to work to provide support for moving forward into the future. Take the data, look at it, drill down into it and say, you know, these are some things that uh, we can do better. Last night that information was presented to our board. Uh, Ms. Chris Floyd did a phenomenal job. We appreciate that work. Dr. Oates has been working with her and, and I felt good about that. If you want to go to our eboard site, you can actually see the PowerPoint presentation. There's going to be more information coming out uh, moving forward. So with that, thank you. Please don't hesitate to contact me, classroom teachers, if you have requests and or concerns working through your principals and uh, we'll see what we can do if you have some innovative practice that you'd like to look at. And that concludes our video for this morning. Thank you.